Okay, we're going to get into the mechanics of the trigger, because even though it's not a fix video per se, you, it helps to fix things when you understand what the parts do. It puts things in perspective for you. So to start with the parts, start with the more controversial and confusing safety tab, which uh, Daisy wants in there for a reason, and we'll go over that. And then we have the, what I call the hammer in Pump Talk. Many times they call us the hammer, and this has a long arm on it. And there's your valve attached to it, and it is anchored to that. Let me see here. Let me move in just a little closer. Okay. So it was anchored to that with an E-clip on bottom. So let's go ahead and so you can see what that looks like in real time. See? And that's how, that, and that's how things... That's how you cock your gun to compress air and hold air. And then, obviously, when it pushes... Or that is, yes, when it pushes down on it, it releases it. Okay, so so you have your valve assembly, your hammer, and your hammer arm, and you have a catch point here for your trigger sear right there. Okay, and then we have obviously the trigger blade that has many different things that's just a little bit more complex than people think. So you have the trigger sear right there, and then a place for a spring that's a return spring and does double duty. And we'll go into that. And then, of course, you have the loading bolt right here. So let's take a look at that. Uh, there is a bagged it. I prefer people don't use the 880 as a BB gun. You can. Basically, two pumps will give you decent can accuracy and about 400 feet per second. Anything more than that, you know, it, the BBs are flying all over the place. But at least with 880 and 901 with rifling, you should just use it for a pellet gun and lead balls. Lead balls are fine. Okay, so we have that, a magnet that also does good work loading pellets. And then you have a small O-ring in here that helps seal your breech. Now, as far as oiling that, you can if you if you feel it's getting dry, but I would, um, in the Daisy um, platform compared to Crossman, is, is that if you just oil your wiper, it usually shoots through your gun and shoots up through here when it's going, obviously firing your gun, there's a transport hole where the air releases into your barrel, but air gets up in there and shoots through there, and many times that gets on your o-ring here but again if you feel the need to oil it because you think it's getting dry then feel free to do that but otherwise there we go otherwise yeah many times it takes care of itself when you just oil your uh, wiper and your pump okay and let's see so we covered all that so let's start going into the mechanics of the actual trigger so when you have your loading bolt in here like this it obviously looks different it's going to have a handle on it and this is a look from inside your gun the back of that hammer arm when you cock your gun back it pushes that down okay so it does this it pushes down like that okay so now we're going to get into something so you can actually see what that affects because you're seeing that here but a lot of people don't understand what that affects Okay, first of all, the safety tab kicks up when you do that, and that's so the gun will not fire when the, the breech is open. Now, I've gone over this with people trying to figure out why Daisy felt the need to do that. I mean, what situation would that be important for to have that there? Because it will only, your trigger will only pull when your loading bolt is over the top and pressing down on it, and it's kind of hard to simulate here, but when it's inside your receivers, it presses down on that. So what we came up with is that if someone loaded a pellet because you have to cock your gun before you can even pump it. So if someone loads a pellet, they pump their gun 10 times, and then for some some weird reason, they decide to pull this back and look in there for whatever reason. If your trigger um, fired, if it, if it disengaged, uh, the air would blow back this way pretty violently, especially on something like 10 pumps or, or anything like that. And so that would be a problem. So I'm... That's the best. Uh, ex that's the best reason I can think of why they would uh, have that on there, just in case you know you definitely don't want anything going wrong in the breach area if someone does well something kind of silly. All right, so that's that's what that's for. People have been wondering why would they do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here. And so when your bolt is over the top and you pull your trigger, now watch that valve stem. See, and that releases air from your compression chamber up into your barrel and then fires your gun. So yes, this, this video is going to be in pretty mega close-up, so you can actually see this. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and demonstrate that again. You cock your bolt back to load a pellet. Now watch that valve stem. Watch that. See that? And then you pull your trigger. Your bolt comes forward, pushes down on that safety tab, and you disengage your trigger. Or that is, you pull your trigger and disengage that catch point. Oh, sorry. There we go. Let's do that again. <laughs> okay, and your bolt comes over the top, and you pull your trigger. There you go. Okay, now let's go ahead and pause it. I want to show you another angle on something I think you want to see. Okay, from this angle, you're actually going to see your trigger sear engage that catch point on your hammer arm. So you can see what that looks like. So then I go ahead and, okay, let me, okay, there we go. So we push down on it. There we go. You can see that lock up on there. Okay, so that top of that trigger sear is engaged on your arm. And it's compressing a spring right next to it. That spring right here is getting compressed. And over here, yep, your valve is blocked the hole up in here, up in there in the compression chamber. So that's what that looks like. And let's go ahead and show you the loose parts. Okay, so let's go over what that looks like with the loose parts. And I'm not going to show the spring because that just is too hard to handle. So what I just showed you, that little window in the frame of the gun is it's up here like this when the gun is cocked and the spring is compressed there normally be a spring right here between those two points right here and and then when you pull the trigger it comes down off that and this arm drops the hammer drops and opens up your valve to release the air and you fire your gun then it looks like that okay so again so it catches there's your catch point Okay, your spring would be in the back there, and it does two duties. Yes, it's a return spring for your trigger, but it forcefully, forcefully pushes down this hammer arm like that and fires your gun. Okay, so that's that's what that looks like right there. Let's see if I can give you a nice, good close up of that so you can see that a little more clearly than you did in your gun, than the gun. So just like that, and then when you fire, it comes off of that, and this thing comes down. Okay, that's pretty close up though. Let me get back out. There we go. Okay, so as far as the safety catch, uh, there's a lot of people, you know, that say different things about it that it helps set your trigger and that you got to have it and everything. I just think it's best you keep it in your gun. This isn't a mod channel and I'm definitely not going to say disable a safety device. So Daisy feels you need it. And so I would just go ahead and keep this in the gun. You just use the punch, as I've shown in another video, to line this up with the top of your trigger. It's not a big deal. And, yeah, I would just say go ahead and keep this in your gun. Okay, thank you.